Yeah, I'm giving them my energy return. That's enough, right? It's enough. It's enough. Right. Yeah, the Kaisa is what you're talking about. Definitely not the definitely not the Caitlyn that was so dominating out of all righty. Not an issue at all. There have been a couple changes. Cho'Gath moving up a huge amount of priority into the pick and bans. It was not until the second rotation that we saw him getting banned away last game. This time, it seems that Maryland may be thinking that they could be more priority into this top lane, not wanting Dakar to have some more comfort champions in that Cho'Gath. Exactly, and they also just want to get rid of these safe tanks as so far Georgia has only shown that they want to play the long scaling competition except for Greeny who is playing Brand. Maybe a little bit sticking out there, but either way, uh, Georgia is going to have to pull out something new this season, and this match rather. They have to pull out something fresh, something that the other side isn't going to expect because Maryland, there is no need to change anything that they just did. Sure, Caitlyn's no longer on the board, but Jen's still a very viable early game pick. And I don't see why I don't just run back game number one's comp. I also like what's coming in from Maryland. They realize the car is pretty strong in the top lane. Did really well on that follow bear. So they take that off the board. And lock themselves in Morgana as quickly as humanly possible. Just to help out Quark get more and more dark bindings on Dilar and Greeny. So far, nothing changing just yet. But yeah, the Morgana pickup already. We talked about the Jin. Uh, still on the board. Certainly a lot of other things too if they want some early game pressure like the Ash, but Irelia was left up on the board and this is reworked Irelia. So you do yes, have uh, the brand new ultimate, the basically the disarm field, uh, which could actually turn really useful. But uh, speaking of unmeta picks, that we have not seen a uh, Dr. Mundo in quite some time if that actually does get locked. Mundo, Mundo, Mundo. Oh boy. Mundo. Mundo, Mundo. Oh. Aww. Okay, this is just as good. Nuno. Okay. <laughs> All right, I, I like it. I like Magical's it. happy. We're good. I'm happy. You got, you got Nuno. Mundo would have been definitely something I would have enjoyed, but Nuno is an interesting pickup because we know Wheezy plays very aggressively on the jungle, so Nuno, he can stay a little bit safe, but he can't duel with anyone. So Rengar could be just as powerful. Kha'Zix moves up a little bit in the priority yeah. if he wants to go for something that can battle Nuno really early on. Yeah, so much is actually still on the board, and even Nidalee, who's been rising in priority a little bit as of late. And all of the generic tank jungles, you have Olaf, you have Skarner, you have Trundle, anything you could really want or wish for is available in that jungle. And the best part is that you cannot be banned out of the jungle pool with only two more bans remaining for Georgia College. But normally you see the Nunu with some sort of hyperscaling composition because you just give bonus AP, you give bonus scaling AD to either your ADC or your mid laner, Azir and Kog'Maw are kind of like the two that come to mind uh, with that pick. But once again, if they want to go for that composition, they're going to be basically banking on this late game. And with the Twitch lock-in, it heavily signifies what you are just saying, that banking on getting to the late game, banking on the game stalling out to the 30-minute mark. Mm -hmm. But that is not how Maryland like to play. With the Lucian locked-in especially, you know that they're going to go very aggressive early on. Let me, uh... Yeah, the, the normal Lucian build as of late has been the three-item crit Lucian. You just go for the late game scaling. Sure, you still have an amazing amount of potential fighting in the early game with the double shot passive, with the E, with the Q piercing light, all that good stuff, especially against someone like Twitch, who is probably one of the lowest damage early game ADCs in the meta. Uh, but even so, you get stuff done in the early game, rise with the mobility and the pushing advantage over most enemy mid laners. Uh, so once again, Maryville setting themselves for a very dominant early game, maybe a little bit more rotational based than just the last game, smash your own lane and everyone smashes lane and the game ends from that point forward. But uh, one, two more jungle bands come out. No Skarner, no Jax. And the, the bigger thing for me, though, is the Scion getting locked in. We have Aurelia and Nunu already locked in, so I almost wonder if that Nunu might be flexed into the support role, maybe Aurelia into the jungle, and then last possibility, Scion goes mid onto John. And on the flip side, Kha'Zix locked in for Wheezy. This is the thing I said moved up in priority once you mm -hmm. see the Nunu. And there have been some recent buffs, especially to the isolation damage on... Uh, the Taste, the Fear for Kha'Zix, so is Q. Basically, whenever you get Isolation Damage, it's now even more prevalent. If you find out Chang in those jungles, it's just going to do more damage. And now, uh, looking at all the lanes, that could actually be the mid lane Scion. 
Uh, yeah, mid lane Sina, Sion, and maybe top lane Rise, because Karma locked in with Morgana already with the team. There's a lot of flexibility for both teams, so mm -hmm. I'm expecting it to be that mid lane Sion, but now the Karma can easily go into the mid lane as well and poke out that Sion early on. Or this could be the classic tank top lane Karma, or not, <laughs> either way. Oh, that'd uh, be hilarious yeah. if we saw that coming in. I haven't seen that in quite some time. It used to be even worse than it is right now, where you I think it was a almost a one to one ratio with her heal that she was getting for a mm -hmm. little bit of time. Yeah, she it was probably, it was uh, crazy. <laughs> it was it was absurd. That's what it was, Richard. And that's coming from me. That's coming from the oh, guy God. that likes to break the system who says that that is broken. So that's how you know it was bad, but looks like it is going to be Karma mid against Scion. So now, with these in mind, I feel like the early game is still there for Maryland, but now they have a few more options to try to see if they can scale up into the late game, but only in terms of damage. No frontline still. That is a very good point, and that still keeps this late game win condition for Georgia. If you can get that Twitch to 3-4 items with the Nunu, with a decently tanky sign on the front line even a brahm he will out damage every single member on that enemy maryland team but unfortunately the issue is getting there in last game i don't think dalor came anywhere near the late game csing from already i'm pretty sure already at least flame horizoned him if not more on that matchup and especially with the lucian plus borgana quirk is no slouch here on the morgana he finds the bindings he finds the straight up damage and sure lucian's a little bit more risky all in uh, sort than Kalen just standing 50 feet back hitting the headshots, but it's still going to be such a demo devastating, demolishing lane down there. Scion is going to be the big question mark for me, because this pick in the mid lane, Scion, you get the shout, you get the uh, arcane comet, and you just wave clear for days. Not sure how that's going to be able to hold up against a karma, but the key point is still there. Will it be enough, though? That's, that is definitely a question. I mean, they obviously picked that because they thought it was going to go into the Rise. In early game, Sion does so well into Rise. He can shove him out earlier. He can poke him down, make it so Rise has struggling a little bit into the lane when he is at his weakest. But against a Karma, who's very strong in the 1 to 6 levels, can shove out the Sion just as effectively and pretty much negate the effectiveness that John would want to go for some of those roams once he hits 6. Yes, yeah, certainly. Cannot really put that past either of these squads, but I mean, still looking at it, Darkest in the top lane on Aurelia, I am a lot happier now if this is the champion for Georgia that gets those like four kills ahead in this early game, it's much more likely that he's going to be able to go forward and shut down Alrighty or shut down Yang. But at the same time, it's a different jungler. Mm. Jung is on to Nunu, not on to Udyr like he was before, who's a lot better at going for some of those earlier ganks to try to help out to car we already saw how gang is plays very aggressive early on even when behind kept trying to fight with the renekton into volibear and udier but this time just aurelia nunu if kha'zix ever comes up there if wheezy is ever in the neighborhood mm -hmm. i don't feel like this aurelia is going to be able to escape that is certainly true and the compositions really boil down to Georgia College need to play with so much discipline here in this matchup. They can't overextend, otherwise Wheezy will shut them down each and every time. Bot lane already in Quirk. So much kill potential in that bottom lane, and even White in the mid lane still should have the theoretical shoving advantage directly against Emperor John Sion. So, it, it for me, I'm trying to rack my brain finding out where Georgia College actually come away with the advantage in the early game, and it's just not there. They just don't have any early game priority in any of these lanes. Closest thing, maybe the top lane, but even that is definitely up in the air with the new Irelia. You know, it's stuff we're going to have to find out in just a little bit return. And before we get into game two between Maryland and Georgia, I'm going to give a quick little shout out over to Juice Battery. If you find yourself playing a game of uh, Fortnite on console and it looks like you're about to get Victory Royale, you spot the last squad and you have them in your sights, you press to shoot and nothing. No, not, that's not the lag. That's dead controller because you've been using some generic brand battery. If you were using juice battery, you would have long-lasting, rechargeable batteries that last six times longer than the other brands you see out there. Stay charged so you can stay in the game. Head over to www.juicebattery.com to learn more. Yeah, and with that and with our kind words from our sponsors over at Juice Batteries, only the best juice in your battery... 
We're going to be throwing it on over to game number two in Maryland. They're looking to close it out and claim their first win of the group stages here at the play-ins. Now we have to ask ourselves, do we expect to see another pre-20 victory coming out of Maryland? They've drafted a composition that Ooh. definitely can do that. Like I mentioned before, they don't have a front line. No one's mm. going to be able to absorb any damage that comes out if the game scales up into the 30-40 minute mark. Yeah, not quite sure if we can expect another sub-19 minute victory or sub-20 minute victory. But certainly the before 30 minute mark is exactly where Maryland's going to want to start hitting. Because anything above that, the tanks from Georgia just get a little bit too tanky and the damage from Daylor gets a little bit too much to handle. Uh, that being said, though, they have every single tool they could possibly need. Collapsing here in the mid lane, 3v2. I almost like expected to see a little bit of a dance party, but the flash coming out of Chung. He unfortunately wasn't able to get some of those spams. He's got the hex deck. He's got... Hey, no, that's Nunubot. What are you talking about? Get no, out of here. No, no, he's got the Hextech Flash. He basically still has Flash, is oh, what I'm trying oh, to say. Okay. Yeah, okay. I thought you were trying to call Nunubot Hextech. No, no, no. no. We, never, we never disrespect our Lord and Savior like that. Yes, he's the best skin in the game ever. Anyone who argues with me is flat out wrong, both objectively and subjectively. So, just saying that now. Yeah, whatever object you do want to approach that from... What does start to draw some question marks for me is this mid lane matchup already. You have minion demon Tealizers on the side for Mary Millen with those mini demon uh, mini rather on white for the karma push, but you don't have them on the opposite side. John should be trying to match, if not out push the karma. And sure, that's a heavy task, but it certainly can be done. But not even taking the hexec uh, minion demon Tealizers rather just isn't even trying to win that match. I mean, now he has to find some other way to really win out through either map pressure going around the map or some other just form of aggression to actually come out with anything in this mid lane. Look over to the junglers. Both of them started on the bottom side of the map, which to me indicates that they want to make a play in the top lane, especially after what we saw in game one. Great adaptation coming in from Maryland. They want to make sure that all their lanes are getting ahead. They're very confident in this mid and bot lane. The top lane, Gar was able to put some great valiant effort into that lane to try to get himself ahead. You watch the level two hitting here from Maryland. They might go for something aggressive. Try to see if they can lay down the Tormented Soils. Dark Binding Land, that's the Ignite. They already realized that Greeny cannot survive and they sacrifice him to the greater good. And ooh, a little bit of fighting in the top end as well, but it does look like Dark Dakar is not gonna be able to play anything out just yet. But keep your eyes on that jungle. Wesley's already making his way in towards the red buff. Yeah, trying to see if he can go for a steal. Already has double buffs. Lots of damage coming in. Jung, no flash. It's only the hex deck. Jump on by the leap. Is he isolated Got for flash. the entire time? That's gonna be the flash coming in from Wheezy, but John has rotated towards this fight. Wants to see if he can get a return, but with white here as well. Past the flash, doesn't want to get rooted up. The Monte Q landing scares away Sion. And this is the pure power of the Karma pick, not because it just breaks every single lane you put it into, but because it potentially, continuously, and basically without fail, keeps that mid lane shoving. And when you have a shoving mid lane, you will always have jungle priority around that middle lane as well. You can have Wheezy go into that jungle in these early levels because he knows White is going to be the first man to the party. He's going to have the backup. And just like that, once again, two kills going down for Maryland and another route. Not quite going to be as much damage this time around. Not as much this time, but to me, it just shows what you were kind of setting up. That the mid lane's got the push for White on this Karma, but look at top. Look at bot. All of these lanes are shoving, and it's Woo. an easy rotation from Wheezy. He ganked from the jungle of Jung to get the kill onto John. And that was such a quick turnaround. You saw off that last engage play over by the mid lane T2 that Emperor John did not have a flash yet available. Dakaris has to be very cool. Flash coming in with the E. Picked up the kill for Yang. Hex flash <laughs> wants to get him over for the fight. But I don't know if you can battle this. You're not AP Nunu. Here comes teleport in from White. Jung's got to go on the run if he wants to, but I don't think he can escape for long with the CC train. That's the fifth kill of the game. Sub five minutes for Maryland. More than one kill a minute going for Maryland right now, and this is just starting to fall apart on the side of Georgia. And once again, here's the gank once more. Dakar not re 
respecting the fact that white still might be in the area here comes the tp in that's the dp in from Jump? the jungle he has i mean i guess he has the unsealed spell book i just didn't expect him to <laughs> be the yeah, one tping in you and me both um okay so uh, either way definitely a very very mobile ching uh, on this jungle clear so far with being able to go in and gank those lanes of white. Has to be a little bit careful, but honestly, Karma still has flash. She's going to be able to walk out. Exactly. And with the root, Mantra Q, Jung taking a big chunk of damage from that one. Still, in the end, it's going to be the snowball effect that we saw from last game. Sure, it might be Nunu for Georgia, but just because you have the man with the snowballs doesn't mean your team is going to snowball. Unfortunately not, you still need something else to get you through that early game. And I want to take our attention back to this bottom lane. Not only because that first kill going over definitely helps already. Not also because they're just going super aggressive uh, right from the onset. But this is probably one of the weakest bottom lanes for the early game you can possibly draft. Uh, with the well, Twitch... Outside of having Janna, I suppose. <laughs> no, Janna's more aggressive. I don't know what you're talking about. Janna, Janna is the best poke-based character in the game right now. But either what way, are you talking about? You build her AD. You're you're wrong. Yeah, my bad. Either way though, <laughs> the Twitch just doesn't have damage in the early game. Every single one of his abilities relies on pretty heavy AD scaling. Plus, he just wants to get to the crit build anyway. Has a pretty short range and not much wave clear just to put that whole package together. And Braum, sure, with the right ADC like Lucian, he can go extremely aggressive. But with someone like Twitch, you're literally just there to soak up damage. You're not able to trade anything back. And especially against something like the Morgana and the Lucian lane, you have no response for anything that lane does, except for just like bringing a TP down, bringing a jungler down. Though you have to say, in a game where you have three TPs on one side, asking for a TP might not be out of the question. Not at all, but all TPs on cooldown. d -Lore has to use the heal to get out of that fight. And... Alrighty, Quirk, they're not even looking to see us. They're not even looking to push anymore. They just want to solidify these kills. Wheezy. That's gonna be Wheezy going into the jungle. Doesn't hit the void spikes, but all in all, doesn't really hurt the chances of getting the kill and the killing spree going in. Great use of the camouflage to dodge away from that damage. Here's about to come the roam from Quirk. Try to see if he can help out his jungler. Gets him out of dodge for now. That's another kill going over the way of Maryland. Yeah, and here's potentially an unforeseen consequence of taking the Summoner Spellbook, of trading out the Flash already. If you're Chang and you run into Wheezy in the jungle, there is no way you get away from him. He will Not stick to you like everything. Oof, almost saw a kill going up in the top lane again. This looks like the first Brick Gold will be solidified in the bot lane. The call comes out. Look at the level disparity from- Gets him anyway. Lane. Gets them anyways, gets the tower as well. That is now 5,000 over for Maryland in game two. Yeah, unfortunately, they have fallen off of the one kill a minute, but Yang, he's the not under his tower. He's on the wrong side of the map. I don't know if he gets out of this. I don't think he does as well. The shield's coming in. Tries to see if he can get away. No flash available for him. Jung doesn't have it as well. Can he get the snowball? Oh, this it's one more. Whoa. Doesn't have boots just yet, so he cannot keep up with Yang. That's a bit of a heartbreaker, because still not a single kill going in favor from Georgia. A perfect game is not off the table just yet. No, that is very true. And honestly, if you're Maryland, do you want to try to go for that? Do you want to try to see if you can prove that you might be the top team in Group A? I mean, you need as dominant of a win as you can possibly get. Uh, maybe throw a few words of encouragement back over to Georgia on the other side, because you will always be happy for them to play spoilers to either Simon Fraser in this group or Ottawa, two very, very worthy adversaries. I mean, Simon Fraser, we thought was going to win the whole thing in the West, uh, eventually falling to UCI in the last get match uh, of the entire tournament on the top side, but already another gang, 2v2. And look at Chung, how much damage he takes. He tried to go for the consume to give himself a little bit of life, but you cannot keep up with that isolation damage that's coming out with the warrior enchantment from Wheezy. Now Dakaris is underneath his own tower, about to get jumped on, tries to go for the stun, doesn't connect it onto anybody. Unstoppable and mid lane, White goes with a dive with Quark roaming to help out. 
Dealer, can he trade back a kill? He's going for the ambush. A little bit of damage with the rat -a -tat, tat One more down, putting Karma into the grave. And it seems like the perfect game is gone, but not the fact that the game still will go for Maryland. Double TP on top side. I don't really think they can contest this one at all, but... Oh, they're going on bot! And bot lane already picking up a kill so quickly, too. Pretty much the moment you talk about it, the moment it's going down. Chung, he teleported top lane only to give more kills. Wheezy cannot get out of dodge. The shutdown will be given over to Aurelia. So, sadly, two more kills into the pocket of Georgia means the perfect game is long gone and dead. Unfortunate. Still, a 7,000 gold lead almost for Maryland at this point. And you still cannot be drawing this any better for Maryland. They have such a skirmish-based composition, and they're so happy to take each and every one of these fights everywhere on the map at the same time. Whew. So close from the car. Heartbreaker. That is, because honestly, that might be the win condition for Georgia, where they just catch out Maryland playing way too greedy, give a couple kills over to this Aurelia, and start setting up a split push. That could happen if they're giving over vital members such as Zilor, who hasn't died this game on the Twitch, but, oh, wait a minute. I might have spoken a little bit too soon as Weezy rotates up top lane. Stun does Stun. land from Takaris, but the damage is too real. He knew he was stuck. He just decided to turn, hope that he could pull out a magic fight, but unfortunately does not work in the end. And uh, there's that split pusher gone almost immediately. Good disengage here coming out of Maryville, but who's engaging on who? That's a lot of to try to lock down Cork. I don't think you're going to be very happy for that if you were Georgia. You wasted flashes and ults just to try to see if you can jump on to this Morgana. And all you do is get the flash out of her. It's it's still just this vicious cycle where Mary, a Maryville, a Maryland rather, Maryville will be playing uh, at that LA Finals, of course, in the Final A. But Maryland, who are looking to join him. Uh, they are still just making the cycle of make a play, make another play, all before there can be any response out of Georgia. And this is how the top teams stay ahead and keep ahead. Because right now, Georgia, they aren't even given a moment to think. And Not that just leads to just a continued snowball. Look at the CS differentials coming in for all of these lanes. More than 20 for most. The only one that's even remotely close would be this mid lane. And the bot lane, another kill going top lane as well. There's so much unrelenting pressure from Maryland. They want to get more kills. Flash from Alrighty as he's going underneath the inhibitor towers at 12 minutes into the game. It's just absolutely insane the amount of pressure they're still able to put down on the map. Harold popped on the top side will probably mean another tower falling there and already a three tower lead look to, looks to be ballooning out to four and that means the only towers outside of the middle uh, outside of the inhibitors are only standing in the mid lane and I mean, if you're the side of Maryland, you know where you're going next. Exactly, just run it down mid, take down these towers. There's no real way for Georgia to fight back. The banner command has just been completed by John. I'm sure White doesn't have any completed items himself, but top lane, Rod of Ages, the jungler has already gotten the serrated Dirk. They're finding themselves at such an advantage for Maryland that they feel confident. Here's a potential 5v5 battle. If they take out White, they take out some of the shield. Shoal Shackles onto one member. Gonna land on a Chung, locking him down. But Cork gets picked up. The cards has double kills. This could be the fight that Georgia wanted. They're picking off members left and right from Maryland. Wheezy into the back line. Hasn't killed anyone just yet until this fight finally get the kill. Alrighty in the front line. Wheezy has to trade his own life, but it's 1v3. Alrighty. He does not feel the turret. He feels powerful with the calling, almost picking up the kill onto Daylord. Right now, John doing his best to see if he can zone away this carry for Maryland. He's the only surviving member of that whole fight for his team, but he was not deterred. He's sitting 6 0 and 1 on this Lucian. And that was a great team fight coming out from Georgia. They needed absolutely everything in that fight to go right. They kept Daylord alive. They used great front-to-back teamfight technique, and it just works for them, and certainly a huge overextend from Maryland. But, but now, this is what happens. They're going to be able to pick up some items, and sure, especially Delor. He is so far behind that even he has not caught up after picking off about two kills in that fight, but he's getting ever closer. And if we get to that point where we, items are completed now on the core carries for Georgia, they will win these fights. That's the thing, though. 
is that fight was without already for the majority of it. He was off doing something in his own jungle, getting a little bit more gold before he joined in. And once he joined in, he was zoning away three members of Georgia. No towers kicked up despite the fact that Georgia won handedly in that fight. Mm. Doesn't bode well, but if they get this pick onto Weezy, he goes a little bit far in with White in the back line. Could be their play, but TP flank. There's the possibility for Rai to join the fight. to Gari will trade his own life. Absolute zero. Doesn't connect onto anybody. White being run down. They're trying to see if they can get the concussive stacks. The Winter's Bite misses. Knock up onto Yang. The poke coming in from White. He's raining it down with Rise into the back line. They warp their way to cut off Jung. And he has no escape in this battle. They want to just give another kill over to Alrighty. But it seems that like Quark will be the reciprocant of that. Dancing a little bit with Chung and White going up to the top side of the map just to get more pressure for the team. Still a good job coming out of Georgia to keep Dealer alive during the initial engage, making sure Wesley is actually able to pick him one off. But the team fighting dominance from Maryland finally starts to show its head in this match. They are able to break up the team fight of Georgia. Delor had to run down the river, and once that ADC is gone, there's no one you have to be afraid of anymore. You can just walk right through him. Yeah, they just dove a tower. Not a care. They don't care. Well coming in from Maryland. Easy pick up on the D Lord. Now, John tries to go on to Young. Young doesn't get knocked up, but he got hit by the Winter's Bite one time. Concussive stacks are starting to stack up. He will be stunned. Greeny picking up the kill and White too far out for comfort as they jump onto Wheezy with a little bit of the damage reduced, but it's not enough to stop Alrighty. He's making it rain. He's got exhaust on him, but it's not enough to stop the relentless pursuit of Alrighty. He's underneath the tower. Chong taking the poke. He will survive for now. Him and John have to run for the hills, get themselves healthy, but they will lose their final outer tower. And still, Maryland are not being stomped, even though they keep losing these small fights on the edge. Thankfully though, they bought themselves so much time with this gold lead. 14k in their favor, 25 to 9, it's just 16 minutes into this matchup. Just look at the ADCs and it will continue to tell the story of this match. 7-0-3, two items completed for Alrighty, whereas on the other side, Dealer, he's only got the Infinity Edge. It doesn't even have that anymore because he is gone. Assassinated by Wheezy. Playing Rengar in game one, the Kha'Zix in game two. He's 10, 3, and 4 right now. He's making sure to take out whoever he finds to be the most crucial part for Georgia, making sure that they're not actually a factor. I mean, they just need to find some answer to something at this point because there are so many questions left up on this board. How do you stop the split push coming out of Yang? How do you stop the dive from Wheezy? And how do you stop the team fighting available from Alrighty? Unfortunately, there just are not answers to all of those questions. As long as Maryville continues this execution, they will not be stopped. Two members now onto the top side, but keep your eyes on Alrighty. He is still pushing pretty hard on the bottom portion of the map. There's no charge from John, so he's not going to be able to chug it on along to try to see if they can get on to Yang. Goes for the Realm Warp to cut off Chung. White in the area as well, but that's going to be a full channel of Absolute Zero doing absolutely nothing. White easily finishes him off. Alrighty, trying to run away. Three members chasing them down, but once Cork shows up with a spooky ghost to slow down the members on Georgia, they turn it back around, getting the flash out of Braum. The push coming in with Wheezy underneath the inhibitor towers. He wants to assassinate someone. Yang in the back line as well. Sun connects from Aurelia, but it's not enough to deter the relentless onslaught coming in. That's going to be the knockup, but his life is sacrificed. And John jumping in. Wheezy wants to assassinate the bomb, but alrighty, he's doing his best to make work of the team of Georgia. Not much they can do. Flash the flash coming in, calling to finish off the kill. The last. Surviving member Jung runs back to his fountain knowing he cannot fight against Maryland anymore. 16 seconds remaining on these death timers, especially on to both Emperor plus green screen. They'll be the first ones up, but you gotta take something here if you are Maryland. Sure, you are still in the lead, but you do eventually need to end this game out. And so far, they haven't taken any of those inhibitor towers despite the last two minutes, them being completely open. They could have just pulled off that fight went to go get the objectives, but they went for the all-or-nothing fight, and if that goes wrong next time around, that could be the Baron going over. And that's the thing, is we need to see if Maryland overextend a little bit too much. They have been doing that a couple times game. Well, yeah, they have themselves almost a 17,000 gold lead, 
over Georgia. Georgia have had some glimmering hopes. They have had some ways to fight back into this game. One overextension, one bad 4v5 or 3v5 where Maryland feel a little bit too confident. You can give over some key objectives to Georgia. Certainly, and just like that, here comes Weezy once more. He's looking for the assassination on the back line. Oh! Uh, assassination, that's a massacre of D-Lord. Taking him out so quickly. Killing spree even for Weezy as he finished off Greeny. And I think with that, it's going to be a lot of the hopes and dreams for Georgia to try to come back into this game. Gone. Jumping forward. Weezy has so much damage on to Scion. He's supposed to be a tank, but he sliced through like butter. The inhibitor tower being sieged by Maryland. They want to finally crack open the base of Georgia. And it looks like there is going to be very little left in their path to stop. If they don't end the game right here, they can easily just go back to the Baron. Something that didn't even spawn in the last matchup, but... Chang already being bursted down quite heavily. 4v5, do they look for the end here? He could easily take down the inhibitors and see if they want to keep the pressure going in, but at that same token, could be a little bit of an overaggression with two Nexus Towers still standing. And here comes the initial push. All five members are available on the defending side. But do Georgia look for the engage? It's looking like yes. Taken pretty low. You gotta be careful if you're on the side of Georgia. You don't have one of your frontline tanks, and he's been taken down pretty quickly. It's the jump forward coming in with Scion in tow. Doesn't land anything. Fissure only onto one member. They easily oh. obliterate Twitch, and the follow is gonna be his support. He has no more double kill for Young, and the last one is gonna be Chung as he sliced through, giving legendary status to already the Nexus Towers. Surely to follow suit as John is the last surviving member of Georgia. They flash onto him, going for the ace for Maryland. KDAs have been padded, and it looks like this might one just might end up being the 2-0 victory for Maryland. Certainly a few more towers left to get, but it's all but over right now. All but over, and with the final Nexus Tower down, the flash is in to the Fountain of Georgia, just to pad the KDAs a little bit more, getting even another kill. You just gotta hit this Nexus Tower, this Nexus, a couple more times. Game two solidified a dominant performance coming out of Maryland. I'm going to be honest, I don't think too many people expected anything other than this. If you guys watch those Big Ten Finals over in Chicago, Maryland are just on top of their game at the moment. The playoff buff is in full effect right now. It really is. It's one of those things you just look at and you're like, wow. Yeah. I watched, what was that, a total of 39 minutes of League of Legends. That was a full best of three yeah. series. Yeah, no, Some that was, games that was fast. That long. Certainly so, and... I mean, just looking at this group, sure, Maryland is a really good team, but the route does not get any easier for Georgia College, unfortunately. Simon Fraser in Ottawa, you're going to need to step up your game significantly if you want a chance against those two. But hey, it's still possible. So they've got three matches left and only two, uh, two matches left rather than the top two will be moving on. So uh, Maryland definitely making their bids for that first spot out of the group already. Yeah, and honestly, after that performance, they kind of are trying to prove that the Big Ten is someone you have to look towards. You can't just put them to the wayside say, hey, we don't need to worry about them. Because that was what we expected going into this game. This is what we wanted yeah. to see out of Maryland. Them going for a very, sure, very greedy, very early plays, but them dominating Georgia. Because that is what they need to do if they want to prove themselves in this tournament. Is Especially with the... Uh, top line performance, there are still some question marks left to this Maryland team. I mean, the Big Ten hasn't been the most dominant region of all time. Certainly, a uh, tie line more put towards the north or towards the uh, western region. But even so, the top lane in this matchup uh, for Yang seemed like a little bit of a point of maybe not concern, but something you need to keep your eyes on going forward. Because if he's able to step up outperform what he did today against the big guys, against uh, Simon Trey's, against Ottawa. This team looks solid all the way across, but there are quite a few good teams in this competition that can oh, yeah. just obliterate a suboptimal top laner. Exactly. So that's going to be a point of contention for Maryland later on. So I want to leave this stream at least with a little bit of something that we have. a. It's a quote from uh, Delor coming in. It says, as a first team te uh, first year team, there's some ups and downs, but overall, we really enjoyed playing the Peach Belt season. We aren't really expecting much during play-ins. 
we're just kind of throwing ourselves out there with random comps and seeing if we can catch them off guard because that's really our only hope. So, Georgia, they kind of already knew what was going to come in from mm -hmm. this pool play. But at the same time, you got to give them props for trying everything, yeah. trying different things, saying, hey, maybe it'll work. Yeah, sometimes you just have to accept the reality of your situation. I don't think just yet that the Peach Belt Conference is ready to take a national championship just yet. Definitely a lot more development needed. But take what you can get, get all the on-screen experience that you can from this one, and just learn, use it as a learning experience. And hey, maybe we'll see some of those wackier comps coming out more and more throughout this run. Should be a very fun time to watch, and uh, best of luck to them going on throughout this. But at the moment, certainly their playoff lives are in peril. Definitely are, but not Maryland's. They did a great job going 1-0 now into this play -ins. And I think that's going to do it for us today, right? Well, at least for now, Richard, because I think we have more games coming in later. Am oh, right? yeah. I think we got, we've got some uh, three JV matches loaded up theoretically for you the rest of today. Make sure you guys check out our Twitter, uh, at CSL underscore LOL. We'll keep you guys up to date with all the matches that will be coming across both today and tomorrow as we do continue to, to final in on our Final Four JV teams for the CSL Finals over in Huntington Beach, as well as the C Lowell. Uh, play in stage, top four from there, certainly moving on to our Riot Studios uh, over in LA. But either way, certainly a lot more League Legends coming to you guys this weekend. Yeah, so guys, with that, we're going to bid you adieu. We'll see you later. I hope you guys enjoyed everything. We'll Make sure to check out Return, by the way, on Twitter. Just make sure to... to make uh, LOL underscore Returned. Yeah. I, yeah, I post sure stuff to too. Yeah, Thank make, you. make sure to make fun of them. By the way, see, peace out, guys. I just wanted to say that. And if you couldn't check out the uh, videos, go check out our YouTube. Anyways, have a wonderful night.